All right, people are streaming in here at the Long Beach Expo. It's 2020, February 20th. There's all kinds of exciting things that we're going to show you, our Queen Television viewers. I'm David Lasso, and once again, we'll take you around the room to show you the cool things here at Long Beach. And here's some of the lovely ladies that are at the admissions at Long Beach Expo. What's it like being hit there at the show? It's a wonderful experience. You just see everything out there. Um, some great people and vendors to check out. There's always the security here at Long Beach. They're here to protect us and all the people coming into the convention. Heritage Auctions has one of their very first tables at the inside of the show. They do the auction, so they're given a place of reasonable prominence. A lot of consignment directors here to give, get your consignments for you, and they'll give you all kinds of information about your coins. Here's the PCGS submission table. PCGS is part of the company collector's universe that owns the Long Beach Expo. So not only do they get a good table, they're also sponsors of the show. And people do line up. They want to get their coins submitted to PCGS to just as quickly as possible. Get the coins, have them graded, and get them back so they can sell them on the marketplace. This is the PCGS complete registry set. Oh my goodness. Here's Rebecca Tran. Maybe she'll tell us about this, what's going on here at the show. The person that's going to be telling you about it is David Todd. This is a fabulous exhibition of Flying Eagle and Indian Sense that we were able to bring to the West Coast after it was extremely popular at the Fun Show in Orlando. We have three different collectors that have built these collections over about 30 years. Uh, and then we also have three separate 12-piece pattern sets as well. And David, where did the concept of the set registry come from? Uh, well, the original concept comes from one of the Peace Just founders, David Hall, and also BJ Searles. The Peace Just set registry in general is for the collectors. It's basically a platform where you're able to, to add everything that you own and for an inventory tracking, for insurance purposes, God forbid any, if anything was ever lost, you have a complete extensive record of every part of your coin collection so that if anything happens, you do have those records. Another part of it is collectors are able to compete with each other. So if you and I collect the same thing, the same series of coins, for example, right now we're displaying Flying Eagle and Indian Sense, if you and I collect either of those sets, basically we're competing with each other. So we have a checklist or a set composite that'll show you every coin that's required for each of the sets. And the main aspect of the registry is you starting that set and then trying to complete that set, while along the way you're able to compete with fellow collectors uh, that collect the same thing that you do. So it's, again, completing an entire set from beginning to end, which in this case took these three collectors about 30 years. Um, and it's also the camaraderie and the competition between fellow collectors. Uh, so, you know, I can show off my set, you can show off yours. Whose is more complete and who has the better rating? Stuart, you've got one of the most incredible sets of Indian scents that's ever been put together. What was involved in collecting this? 30 years. 30 years and constant upgrading and constant searching and outsmarting the other guys. Why did you pick Indians? Because I went from Lincolns to Indians. I grew up with Indians. I love Indians. The toning, the difficulty, and the satisfaction that I get. And what is the strategy that you're able to get the coins instead of others? How do you do it? I, I hunt them down. I hunt them down in the auction, out of the auction, during the auction, and through private dealers. Uh, whereas we used to buy, I used to be able to buy coins privately. Now most of the coins are sold at auction. So it's a lot more difficult, a lot more expensive. I feel I've gotten the finest 1877 Indian scent 
ever seen. What does it feel like when you've got the best set of a coin? I don't think I ever have the best set. I'm always trying to get better. I only have a contest with myself to get the coin that I think I can improve. I'm almost there. And I find that I also have the best Mint State 1856 Flying Eagle that I've ever seen. And it makes me happy. Is there a camaraderie amongst collectors? Yes. There's a camaraderie and there's a friendship and we trade amongst each other. We collude during the auction so we don't have to bury each other in the price and we all seem to have a lot of satisfaction from this. What's the best part about coin collecting? The hunt. So that was really cool. That was the PC Jess registry set display. And we're going to go on and show you some other things as well. So here's some incredible displays of paper money. This is from Meredith from Kagan. Kagan is here. And this is one of his cohorts handling paper money. Beautiful, beautiful display of some of the most valuable banknotes that are available. And Kagan's has a lot of them. How about a sheet of uncut $2 educations? It's got to command a pretty penny. And here's the lifeblood of the hobby. A young collector talking to David McCarthy. Aha, here you guys. Hey! What coin is this one, David? So, it's an 1854 Judd 161, which is the reduced size pattern set with no stars on it. Um, and this particular example is an old green holder, proof 66 red-brown. It's the best one I've ever seen. Um, this is a relatively available coin, but despite being a relatively available coin, um, they, they seem to come in lower grade. I've, I've spoken to someone who did some research who claims that they may actually have been released for circulation purposes and claims he has proof of that. And young man, why are you looking at this coin? Uh, I have a collection of patterns that I'm trying to fill up. Do you really? Yes, sir. How long have you been collecting? Since I was five. Aha, uh -huh. and how old are you now? Almost 13. Oh my goodness. And, and he collect... buys real coins. Collect He's patterns. a serious collector. Sell it to you for forty-four hundred dollars. I think it's got a point left in it. Do you have a loop that I can borrow real quick? I like to go to all the big shows, talk to the dealers, and try to buy the coolest coins that I can find. And you told me you were five years old when you started collecting, and you're thirteen now. What is it about coins that have kept your interest? The designs on them are so really, really cool. They always have value to them, and you can always resell them no matter what. So would you look at coin collecting as a hobby or as a profession? Um, both. I like to set some stuff back, but other things I just like to flip, see what I can make on them. And what's the best thing about coin collecting? Uh, the coins, uh, the designs on the coins, the types of metals that they use to make them, and dealers, all sorts of stuff that you can talk about. What would you suggest to other young people to get them interested in coins? Um, start small, but work your way up. And it's not about quantity, but it's about quality. And what do your parents think about your coin collecting? They like traveling, so they like it a lot. <laughs> Yeah, here we are, cruising along. Here we are, cruising along the show 
on the aisle at the Long Beach Coin and Stamp Expo. All kinds of people. Hey, Ron Guth, saying hi to all my friends. Gee, when you've done this for 20, 30, 40 years. Hey, Ara, I'm good. Hey. All right. Yep. So many folks. And, ah, here's a young collector. This is what it's all about. See, you can find junk boxes and look through and find coins for, there can be treasure there. And just, if you're smarter than the dealer is looking, a lot of guys don't have the time to look everything up. So they'll put a box of coins out and just put, hey, here, 50, 50 cents each. See that? No telling what he'll find. So we continue along our way. There's another junk box. See, this is this is this is the, the collectors of every means can come and see cool things. And again, it's, it's just a wonderful thing. If the hobby of coin collecting is as good as it gets. And then here's the tyrant collection. This time it features U.S. coins. You can see the public is really fascinated by them. Here at the Long Beach Expo, I talked to a young man named Joshua who's got his own coin company. He's 18 years old and he's got some really cool coins to show you. This convention is a great opportunity to be able to buy and sell rare coins as well as sports cards. I know one of my friends actually came here specifically just to sell sports cards and um, as well as currency too. Paper currency is seeming like it's doing pretty well right now. Cool. And we ask our dealer friends and collector friends, do you have anything cool to show us? Of course we have cool coins. You know I always bring some of the best Morgans on the floor. So today I brought with me a 1880 Morgan dollar minted in San Francisco, which was graded by PCGS as MS68 proof like. So this has a population of 20 and it only has three finer. So as you can see, this is just blast white. The uh, fields are incredibly clean and the contrast between the devices and the, uh, the fields is just amazing. That's a relatively common San yes, Francisco yeah. mint coin. What is it worth a couple of grades lower? A couple of grades lower, you can get an MS661 for 200 bucks or less. And these, they made millions of them. So being one of the top 23 proof-like examples just makes this coin amazing. Cool, what kind of value? The value of this coin is around $8,500. Oh, what else do you have? So we brought another one. This one, unlike the last one, is a toned Morgan Silver Dollar. So this one um, most likely sat in a canvas bag for, who knows, maybe even a hundred years and developed this toning on the obverse of the coin. So this coin, without the toning, is actually worth maybe 700 bucks just because it's a really high grade, but with the toning, collectors just absolutely love the, the artistic side of toning and on, a, on this coin, that would put the value at around 4K. And is all toning desirable? Not all toning is desirable. In fact, you can get a bunch of tone Morgans, but they'll have brown splotchy toning, which just doesn't look attractive. And you can get those browns and black toning on it and it's just not very uh, appealing for most collectors but once you start getting the the vivid blues and reds especially greens that's a rare color you get more of the premiums for those how about one more all right one last one we have another uh, a tone buffalo nickel which is exquisite so it is a 1919 in ms66 so it already is a uh, harder date to find uh, in this grade of Mint State 66. And um, in Mint State 66, it's already a about a $1,000 coin. And with the toning, it would add about a 
five, six hundred dollar premium. How does a buffalo nickel get that kind of tone? Buffalo nickels are just really rare to find nicely toned, and sometimes they'll be sitting in albums. You can get those Whitman albums or Dansko albums, and they can tone in there. Uh, for this one specifically, um, I'm pretty sure it would have toned in an album. But um, yeah, the colors are really nice. The, the greens really pop, and the surfaces are um, pristine. What's the best part about coin collecting? The best part of coin collecting is you'll never know what you're going to find. You can walk through each aisle and pass over uh, many coins and not see what you like. And then all of a sudden, the excitement kicks in, and you see one incredible coin. You're like, oh, I got to have that. And that's exactly what happened with that 68 PL I had mentioned er earlier. Is I saw that coin in a previous show, and uh, I missed out on buying it. So when I got to see it uh, in Vegas, the last show that I attended, uh, it was like, man, I had to have it. So Joshua, you've come up with a scale of toning. Correct. Can you share with me what's involved and what that's all about? So this grading scale is able to help estimate the value of tone Morgan silver dollars. So basically I put together a 1 to 10 grading scale system to be able to help dealers know exactly what they got, to be able to base on certain factors such as luster, vividness, uh, surface color and transition types to be able to help estimate the value of their, their toners a lot better. Because nowadays the uh, toning market, especially for Morgan dollars, it's really subjective and um, it's really all over the map. You can get a uh, coin that is usually worth 4,000 bucks tone and somebody would be wanting to sell it for 12,000 bucks. But Usually the majority of the problem is that some dealers who haven't seen maybe the best of the best tone Morgans, but don't deal with them too much and maybe get a few here and there, get a, a nicely toned Morgan, but then ask a crazy amount for it. So this scale is able to help kind of settle in the ranges that tone Morgans should sell for. How difficult will it be to get your scale accepted by the rest of the industry? Yes, that, that is something that I'm definitely going to be working on over the next couple of years because as people say, it's in the eye of the beholder, but there are definitely certain factors that are able to contribute to what is attractive as a toner and what is not attractive as a toner. So I've broken down those, those factors into a small, small details for people to read and understand so that way they can determine exactly what level their toner would uh, rank in, which would in the end turn, in, turn up the value. What fun strolling down the aisles at the Long Beach show. There's one of the pretty expo girls. Hey darling. Ah, uh, it's a good world in coin collecting. So there's some neat things. There's somebody has all kinds of silverware and jewelry. Oh my goodness. So when you come to a show like this, it's not just coins and stamps. There's all kinds of anything that's out of silver or gold. So we're going to see, here's one with banknotes, another one of the junk boxes. You can look at this, and it's only a dollar a piece. Some Zimbabwe, all kinds of countries of the world, cool stuff. And now uh, here's one of the junk boxes. Oh my goodness. Here's old France, Mexico, Norway, all kinds of neat things. And it's not just common coins too. Here are the banknotes worth thousands of dollars. Here's some France. France has some beautiful banknotes. Look at this. Give you an idea, $200 for something. And then here's some US coins, paper money.
most dealers are kind of eclectic. They'll either specialize in one particular field or they'll have all kinds of things, just whatever they can buy from the public. A lot of money trains hands here at Long Beach. Dealers buy and sell and it's all in cash sometimes. Legitimate, of course, but it's a way that people don't have to worry about checks and especially when it has to do with gold and silver bullion. And here's a supply company. Every kind of holder you can imagine for your coins. You come here and it's literally wholesale to the public. Whether you've got slab coins or individual coins, paper money, it's all great stuff. Again, it's here at the Long Beach Expo. Oh, and one of my favorite items, $1,000 bill. When in doubt, it's a great thing. How, how much is the thousand, Tom? Uh, 7,500. 75 because it's a nice grade. MS-65, I mean, you normally see VFs or you see pieces that are that are uh, you know, damaged or ink stains, uh, XF sometimes, very seldom a mint state, never mind an MS-65. Wow. It's, 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 a, it's a unusual to see one. One of the first ones we've had in several years. Cool, thank you. Once again, we're at the Long Beach Expo. Cool things to be had. And this from Northeast Numismatics. So here's Bungalow Blondie. She deals some of the coolest things, all kinds of posters and prints. It's not necessarily numismatics, but she does really well with the different collectible items, especially World War II vintage. And who doesn't like a pretty man or a pretty lady? And here's the ANAX Grading Service. A table full of people to find out about their coins. They go for submissions. You submit your coins here. They charge you a fee of anywhere from 10 or 15 or 20 dollars or so, depending on the service and how quickly they return them. And it authenticates the coin and grades it and allows you to sell it for more money. It protects both the buyer and the seller. You can see there's a lot of kids here at the Long Beach Expo. We had a chance to interview another, not a kid, but a young man, 20 years old. He'd just flown out from Boston from his college to find some cool Indian scent varieties. I actually flew in here from Boston, from my, from my college, just to come look for Indian head scent varieties and connect with some different people here at the show that I've been met online, but I wanted to see in person, make some relationships with, so yeah. Have you been to the Long Beach Expo before? Nope, first time. What do you think? It's very different than the fun show. I went to the fun show back in January, and I thought, wow, this is like the epicenter of coins. It's so big, but it was also very stressful too. Remember my first day, I was walking around and I was so lost, like trying to find my way. So I'm like, all right, the day two, let's try and like do this in order, go through systematically. And I found that to be a lot better. So now here I found it, I like the vibe and atmosphere, there's music playing. It's more relaxed, I feel, and very comfortable. And I've enjoyed it a lot, found some cool stuff, so. And how did you get involved in coin collection? So it, it all started from YouTube, actually. So I was watching a YouTube video about pocket change find worth over $200. And I clicked on it and I started going to banks. And I started looking through penny rolls and I'm like, wow, there's some really neat stuff I could find. I was finding 1995 double dies and wheat pennies. I even found one Indian head scent. And with that Indian head scent, it kind of spurred my interest into that. So that's when I started collecting Indian head scent varieties because I was always looking for the varieties in Lincolns. I'm like, why can't I look for varieties in Indian head scents? And you're in college now. How old are you and what are you studying? I'm 18 years old. I'm studying business and entrepreneurship at Babson College. What do you hope to do in life? I want to be a serial entrepreneur, but um, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of coins is definitely what I'm trying to do right now, so. 
But yeah. tell me about this cool coin you've got. So I have an 1868. It's in PCGS VG8, and it's the Snow 13 die gouge and repunch date. So the die gouge on the reverse runs right through the shield. It's super obvious, and it also goes through the wreath and into the one in sense. So it's a really big die gouge. We don't know how it was caused, but it's also neat because it has a repunch date on the obverse in the six and eight. That's sort of the identifier. And currently the highest known one in the PCS registry set is a fine 12. And I was the one that discovered it. So a super exciting coin. Um, it's, in the, it's in Rick Snow's book if you want to learn more about it. And yeah, very hard to find. So if you, everyone keep an eye on these, this coin. It has the big die gouge on the reverse, can't miss it. What's it worth? So I sold the fine 12 for $800. This coin is worth somewhere between, Rick Snow says it's worth $500, so we'll just go with that. But yeah, there's really no price guide value on it. It's, it's only three or four known, so it's, it's tough to say, you know? It's kind of whoever, whatever they'll pay for it. And how much is a regular 1868 worth? This in VG8, oh, a few, 20 bucks maybe, yeah. So it's very fun, varieties can be like that sometimes. They can have big premiums and super fun when you find one. Uh, this is footage that you norm don't normally see. This is the very back end of the Long Beach Expo. There's security at all places. And here's when you walk into the back area of the Long Beach show. You can see the flag. And then there's dealers here too. Oh my gosh, once again. This is for collectors. Depending on the series you like, there's Roosevelt dimes, Mercury dimes, presidential dollars, all kinds of cool things. What well, again, it's all about collecting and the fun of the coin hobby. We're gonna walk around here. And again, this is the very back end of the show. This, these are the least expensive tables. So you can see people have all kinds of boxes of things. Forget those $100,000 coins. Let's find coins that are a dollar each from around the world. All kinds of stuff. Hi. All right. And here's some jewelry. Oh my goodness. Look at this fun stuff. Hi. There's bags of coins, bulk coins, and here's another supply dealer. Again, these are bulk items and the, the cost of the individual widgets are not real expensive. So this is where people that want a lot of table space can get a lot of bang for their buck. And look, some young people. Hi, everybody. Everybody loves a coin show. All right, it's so fun to be popular. Hey, there's another finally smiling face, yay. Everybody loves a coin show. All right, here's a fellow who has gold bonds. Sports items, political buttons, look at all this stuff. So those old Ike dollars, some people think they're only worth a dollar face. Here's a guy selling them for three dollars. Advertising mirrors, this is cool stuff. So the old, uh, the, hey, the, there's Alan Mencho, my good friend, oh, currency, currency fellow from Heritage. Indeed. How's the show? The show is fine. We're doing fine. Took a bunch of consignments. Everybody is happy. Yeah? How's the national market? It's okay. We had a very good show in Florida, and, uh, and it worked. Cool. We'll see you at the next one. You betcha. You Thanks, care. Alan. Appreciate it. When you go to the show, there's all kinds of people you get to see and friendships you get to make. There's guys that I've been, I've been doing these silly shows since 1972. Hey, all right, good to see you. Beautiful, Jack. Thank you. 
Ah, postcards. Oh, this is, postcards are one of my collectible fields. They're not expensive, but boy, they sure are pretty. These are real photos. People collect them for the states, for the themes, and even for the stamps. Again, and then if you look, Long Beach has a stamp section. So that's where we're, that's where we are now. And we've got the Long Beach coin and stamp. Oh, actually the Land, Long Beach Stamp Club. They have waves for membership and all kinds of good things to learn. And as we go down, we're going to head down a little. So now we're going towards the middle of the show. We're gonna go and we're gonna keep going a little more. Look at all these people. I mean, all these people. This is a dealer from Texas, Coleman Foster. He buys and sells all kinds of really nice U.S. coins. Up oh, here's a light, light, lightweight. He closed up early. Nobody here. And then here is the coin television table. David Lasso, his good friend James Lewis, who's known forever. And these are the things that Coin Television deals in. Not only have we been doing video for years and years and have our YouTube channel, we also have over 2,000 DVD titles. And this is the table. When you come and see us at a show, this is where we hang out and will be at most of the major shows. I am David Lusso, and this is Coin Television. Well, it's been exciting. Once again, another Long Beach Expo. And this one's from February 20th, 2020. And oh my gosh, we've seen all kinds of cool sights. I really do love the shows, I love the people, I love meeting people, I love videotaping people, and especially when it's about coin collecting. For Coin Television, I'm David Lasso. I'll see you at the next coin show.